Let's go to the Dean Wade extension now. Three years, $18.5 million. I think that people don't quite recognize that Dean Wade is like a pretty useful NBA player. Uh, six foot nine, can shoot the ball, is more mobile defensively than what he gets credit for. I think this is a deal that kind of makes sense across the board, just straight up. Like, I think that, you know, it, Dean still has not quite established himself as a consistent rotation player, but he is a very, very small step away from that to where if this year he does that, he immediately becomes a bargain on this contract. But the Cavs also have a lot of pieces that could steal minutes from him. So there's an inherent risk if you're Dean Wade and his agency to not do a deal now. Like, Lamar Stevens, like Isaac Coro, like Kevin Love, even to an extent overlaps with him. And, uh, you know, Karis Levert is going to take some minutes at the three then because they have so many flexible pieces with Evan Mobley and with everyone else that I kind of just mentioned, like you're going to have some moments where Robin Lopez is in at the five and it's going to slide everyone up the lineup. And that could create some weird minute structures for Dean Wade. So if you wanted to lock in and like, make sure that you got, some real money and security here long-term. I think that doing this, if you're Dean Wade, makes a lot of sense. I also wonder if we look at this deal and it ends up being a bargain for the Cavs. Yeah, Dean Wade, I mean, traditionally more of a stretch four, if you will, in terms of what his role is. When the Cavs went with their supersize me lineups last year of Allen and Mobley out there, we saw in the starting group that pushed Mark and in more to the three. And it did the same with Wade in those second units where, mm -hmm. you know, Kevin Love would play one of the four or the five. They'd try to leave Allen or Mobley in for some stretches to have some defensive impact and rim protection. And Wade minutes came more at the three. He was fine defensively. The one area where you'd think there would be a little bit of a, a little bit of a concern. He just bothers bigger, taller wings because he's smart with angles. He doesn't really bite on pump fakes. He competes really hard with his first step and tries to cut guys off. That matters. Uh, we saw last year that, you know, having a guy who might be more traditionally a stretch four play that three position in Cleveland worked well. So for the Cavaliers, this is the right type of move to be able to make because it's not an overly expensive contract. And like you yep. said, from, from Wade's perspective, the timing of this does make sense because you don't know what the rotation is going to be with some of the newer pieces that they have brought in, mainly Donovan Mitchell, and how that might change the, the rotations at that wing spot. So uh, a good timing move from both sides, but the, what you led with is the prevailing takeaway for me. I don't think people realize how good Dean Wade actually is. Yeah, like actually a very valuable, like useful piece here. Now I've seen some people note that, you know, the Cavs, can clear off some real money off of their books if they really would want to in 2023, 24. So like next off season, uh, Kevin Love comes off the books. Karis Levert comes off the books. Uh, Dylan Windler can come off the books, right? They have one year deals on Robin Lopez and Howell Neto. Um, like th they have some guys that they could theoretically move on from if they really truly wanted to. And you can be in a situation where you have like, you know, 83, 91, you can be at like $106 million basically for Donovan Mitchell, Jared Allen, Darius Garland, Evan Mobley, Isaac Okoro, and Ricky Rubio, the guys that they have locked in for next year, which would give them like real salary cap space next off season if they want. I just don't think that like if a real free agent wants to come there, I don't think it's going to be hard to move off of like the Ricky Rubio deal or the Isaac Okoro deal and then get that same level of money that you want. Uh, I think that it's not going to be that difficult for them to maintain that flexibility while having signed this deal. And then on top of it, you know, it, this all depends upon them not wanting to re-sign Kevin Love who finished second place in the sixth man of the year award last year. And Karis Levert, who's like a semi-valuable real piece that helps them with shot creation, although they might not need that as much anymore with Donovan Mitchell being there now. So I think that it's just, I'm not that worried about the impact that this has on the Cavs flexibility long-term. I think that this is just a smart move. It's a smart move for both sides. 
One side locks in, gets paid real money. The other side uh, takes on a little bit of risk, but has potential for real reward if Dean Wade takes just a small step forward in terms of being able to stay on the court consistently and can up the three-point volume. I think that's one other thing that like he really needs to work through, being able to get more shots off from three uh, consistently. Yeah, no, he's uh, he's a solid piece to to have on the roster. I don't think six million a year really kills anybody from a cap perspective. So uh, I I don't really see the downside here for Cleveland.